Today, we're going to take a look at this grinder here. It's the Niche Duo. It is the follow up to Niche's breakout debut success, which was the Niche Zero, a grinder that came out maybe five years ago. And we reviewed it back then, and I remember being surprised and charmed by it. The workflow was nice, it was easy to use, and single dose grinding was kind of in its infancy. And this grinder's success, and it was a great success, really kick-started and, and sort of paved the way for the explosion of single dose grinders that we see today with a new one coming out, it feels like every 15 minutes. That I think can be traced back to niche. Now, in my initial review, I think I reflected a few times that while I enjoyed the espresso that it made, and I thought that it made surprisingly good filter coffee for a conical burr set, I wished it was a flat burr grinder. And also I'd be interested to see if they ever do build a flat burr version of this grinder. That would get me very excited indeed. And finally, five years later, that's what they've produced, a flat burr grinder. And the question's gonna be, is it everything I hoped for? Is it building on the success of the Niche Zero, or is it that sophomore slump, that difficult second album? That is the question we're gonna answer. We'll pull some shots, we'll taste them, we'll make some filter coffee, we'll drink that too. And we'll talk about the workflow, any changes, we'll talk about the build, the feel of it, and answer the question, who is this for, who is this not for? And is it worth the extra money over the Niche Zero? So it seems sensible at this point to just quickly define what I mean when I talk about a conical burr profile and a flat burr profile. Now, these aren't hard and fast and 100% true. They're generalizations. Generally speaking, a conical burr will produce more fines than a flat burr. As a result, if you're making espresso from a conical burr grinder, you may have more texture and body, which people really like. You may lack the clarity of a flat burr profile. There, so flat burrs produce less fines and people like that in their espresso. There's no right or wrong here. In filter coffee, generally I would say most people prefer flat burrs because people like uh, clarity more in filter coffee where it's a less intense drink anyway and so texture plays a role but it's a smaller role. Most people prize the kind of clarity of flavor that they get in filter coffee from flat burrs. That's what I mean by the profiles. However, and this is important, uh, just because a burr is conical does not mean it will produce 100% a conical burr profile. That's just the most common profiles you see with conical burrs. Similarly, a flat burr could produce a ground coffee profile that would be almost identical to a conical burr. You know, being flat is not inherently better than conical or vice versa. They're just different approaches. Now, before I give you an overview of the grinder and how it works, I do want to talk about its key selling feature. It's called the Niche Duo, and that's because when they launched it, it came with two different burr sets. One burr set dedicated to espresso, one burr set dedicated to filter coffee. Before they shipped, they kind of walked that back a little bit and said, okay, if you just want one of the burr sets, you can just have one and it'll be cheaper. Uh, I bought both burr sets because I was kind of curious. This is a, a relatively new approach to grinders and to have you know optional burr sets, that's kind of a thing. Generally, changing burrs in grinders is not difficult, but it's not something you want to do very often. And so that's a, a big piece of this thing here. Right now, the espresso burrs are in, and I'll give you a walkthrough of the kind of workflow of the grinder before we make some espresso. We will then change the burr and make some filter coffee. If you're familiar with the Niche Zero, then nothing about this will seem particularly surprising or new. There's a lid on top, and the grinder won't run with the lid open. It's a little sort of piece here that pokes a micro switch. It's a safety thing. It does mean you can't hot start the grinder where you have the motor running before you feed the beans in. Some grinders with weaker motors prefer that, where other grinders with chunkier motors don't really have a problem starting with coffee sort of in the burr set, uh, and that's the case here. For me, I wish I had the choice. Here then is the funnel where you pour your beans into and then they'll fall into the burrs. The funnel is also the piece that you would adjust to adjust your grind setting. So coarser that way, finer this way. It's all labeled up around here on the dial. It's an infinite adjustment, it's stepless, so you can move it exactly how much you want or as small amount as you'd like. It works very well. One difference between this and the Niche Zero is that this is supposed to be calibrated to zero from factory. On the Niche Zero, you kind of could do your own calibration thing that I think actually caused some confusion and some variation between what some people were getting at, say, grind setting 10 on one grinder and another grinder. This should be taken care of here. Moving down, well, there's the on-off switch. That's it, it's just a switch. Obviously, nothing happens if the lid's open. 
coffee comes out from your spout here into this. It's the dosing cup. One of the things that I loved about the original niche. No one was doing these back then. This is a 58 ml cup. I, I can put it inside a portafilter and flip it all around and dose my coffee in without spilling. That's great, that was nice. I loved this when it came out. It shocked me that no one had really done it before. I ended up buying extra just to use on other grinders at the time. So this, nothing's changed between this and the original one. Uh, it sits on a little wooden platform here. You can take off for cleaning. And then that's kind of it. The point of this grinder is that it's very simple. Put coffee in, turn it on, it grinds the coffee, you're done. There's no variable RPM, there's no messing around with stuff. It's a very simple workflow and I actually really like that about it. I love that about the original. I like this about this one too. But, well, let's just make some coffee. So first thing to talk about is that I would say with this grinder, this is necessary. A little spray bottle to wet the beans before you grind them. We made a video about this recently if you want to know the science of this whole thing. It's really interesting. I'll leave it linked down below. But if you don't do that, you will see quite a lot of staticky mess around the exit chute, which I don't want. Now, the downside of having wet the beans is that the funnel on this thing is quite shallow. And so while generally I have no issues, with coffee getting stuck there, on larger doses, say 20 or 30 grams, if you're grinding for filter coffee, then you might need to sort of open the lid as it's grinding and poke the last few in. Preloaded, ready to go. Let's have a listen to it grinding coffee. It's relatively loud, it's not the worst in terms of uh, sonic quality, it doesn't feel unpleasant to listen to, but it is certainly louder than the original niche. I was quite surprised at how slow it was. Generally people associate bigger burrs, and these are 83 mil burrs here, with more throughput, right? You can just grind your coffee faster. The fact that this grinds coffee quite slowly is interesting, and obviously the coffee's being slowly fed into the burr set, which I think helps, uh, but it, it is certainly notable. Anyway, we have our coffee. Now with the niche, with the original niche zero, well that zero referred to zero retention. Now no grinder is truly zero retention, but I will say this grinder does a very good job of limiting the retention of ground coffee inside the burr chamber and shoot. Let's pull that shot. Okay. Before I taste this and tell you about how it tastes, I need to tell you a story about me being useless at my job. You see, when this grinder arrived, I started to pull shots, and I had been anticipating a flat burr grinder from Niche, and I was excited to therefore taste more of a flat burr style profile. And so I started pulling shots, and I thought, okay, yeah, that's a little bit more flat profile. Maybe the body is a little bit lighter. Maybe it, it is a little bit more clarity. But then, well, then we had to stack it up side by side to the Niche Zero and pull some shots blind and, and sort of compare the two. That's where things fell apart for me because I could not reliably pick out which grinder was which from a blind tasting. And I thought that was really interesting. And so generally speaking, I would say this tastes, well, this tastes kind of like a niche zero. It has a slightly more conical profile style. I, I was curious inevitably, and so I straight away went to my particle size analyzer and had a look. Now, I should give some context here. I wanna talk about a different grinder for a second even though it's a very expensive grinder. We have here at the studio a Weber Workshops EG1. It's a grinder we reviewed some time ago. It's outrageously expensive. It comes with multiple burr sets too. I use a burr set called the Core Burr Set, designed to be good at filter coffee and espresso. And that was the kind of gold standard for me. And I'll be honest, when I got this, I was hoping that this would sort of sit in that place. Tasty espresso, but great filter coffee too, from just one burr set. But then they did the two burr sets, and one was filter and one was espresso. So I wondered, how would this be different to the Niche Zero burr set? I don't think it really is. Let me just finish this. So here's a comparison. We dialed in the same coffee, same roast date, same batch, uh, same kind of espresso parameters. So same dose in, about 18 grams, same dose out, about 42 grams, same brew time. Uh, I'll show you first the Niche Zero profile. Now generally in conical burr particle size distributions, what you see is um, some fines and then quite a lot of uh, pieces that are coarser. Quite a lot of the volume is, is sort of a coarser setting, especially compared to a flat burr profile. So if I put the EG1 on screen, you'll be able to see that that sort of the main volume peak is finer. It's more to the left of the chart, so that's finer. 
Uh, and you can see there's quite a distinct difference in the grind profile of the EG1 flat burrs to the Niche Zero conical burrs. Now I'll show you the Niche Duo espresso burr. Yeah, I was quite surprised by this, though kind of reassured that I couldn't tell the difference between the two grinders in a blind tasting. This Niche espresso burr set is really very close to the Niche conical burr set. Uh, and I think I was a little disappointed. I wanted a one-size-fits-all flat burr grinder from Niche. I wanted something like the EG1, but at like a quarter of the price. This, therefore, is, is a strange proposition, especially if you're buying this and you're just buying the espresso burr, you're getting from a sort of cup quality perspective, something that's almost identical to something cheaper from the same company. Now, I understand the argument that's out there that grinders are two things. They are what you kind of get out of the box and then you kind of have a platform to put other burrs into. So this is an 83 mil burr set. There are other 83 mil burr sets out there, but that's extra spend. You know, they're not selling this with no burrs available. I guess maybe someone might eventually do that, but right now you must buy one of their burr sets. And if you want, you know, uh, something for a kind of cleaner espresso and filter, that isn't this burr. The filter burrs can't grind fine enough for espresso. So they're not it either. And so while I like the coffee out of it, part of me was disappointed, but I'm a very specific use case. If you like this profile and you want optionality around those kind of burrs, then you should consider this as a platform as well as a finished product. We should talk about changing the burrs because that's one of the most interesting parts of this whole grinder. To change the burr set, you need two things. You need your little socket driver that Niche supplies you with, which is here, and then you need a set of Niche appropriate burrs. They come in this little box. These ones, well, there's two burrs here, little protective piece between them. They're already mounted onto carriers, which is important. So this one does say uh, filter, it's not beautifully printed onto here, but I can read it. Uh, and it's, so they're kind of pre-installed there. You obviously could take these burrs off and put different burrs on, but the whole magic of this is that they're on the carriers already. So on the grinder, turn it off, twist it coarse all the way. And then you can see in here, I can just lift out that top burr carrier labeled for espresso. And then my socket uh, driver into the middle, unscrew that central bolt, and out comes the bottom burr carrier, and burr carrier and all, which is important. You can clean inside here before you move on, which we should do, should always do. Cleaning is good. So you can then seat your base piece, put the screw in, these are really important, and then you can drop in your top piece. There's three pins that line up with three holes. And you can see that's on the springs, and you can just screw in this top piece again. Okay. Lovely. Done. Now, I, I will say that, you know, the, the kind of double carrier option, everything pre-done, does mean changing burrs on this grinder is far, far easier than any other grinder ever used. For comparison, most burrs just come loose. You know what I mean? You have to find a way to install them. Yes, on the Weber workshops, there's little magnets on the back and that's how they install and that's very fancy. But most grinders, you're going to sort of open three screws here. It's just a bit more work. This is as neat an experience as I could imagine, but I'm not sure I could imagine doing that often. I, I'm not sure I'd want to do that every day or every other day or, or to you know change brewing methods. As I said, it couldn't be easier and yet it is still, to me, too much of a barrier, if I'm honest. For me personally, my workflow, my needs, my preferences. Much faster, a couple of sticky beans. Generally speaking, I have to say, I have really enjoyed the filter coffee from this burr set, from this grinder. Uh, it's been clean, sweet, characterful, no obvious defects of flavor coming from the burrs or the grind. I've really enjoyed it. I have no complaints, to be honest, about the quality of the filter coffee from the Niche Duo with the filter-specific burr set. This is a very light roast, quite hard to extract coffee. It's done a really good job with it here. On that front, I have no complaints. But that doesn't mean I have no complaints. I'll start with maybe the weirdest, the blue. I don't like the blue. I, 
I know, right? The blue and the silver and the black don't work for me. It, it's not beautiful as a, as a kind of color palette to me. I find it odd, distracting. Secondly, on the tiny nitpicks front, the popcorning with the filter grind setting is, uh, and burr set is a little bit worse. And occasionally beans will get out of the funnel and sort of between the lid and this piece here, it kind of gets stuck there. So you have to open this to kind of get them out. It's happened more than once and it's kind of a weird little quirk. It's a nitpick, but it's still a thing that we noticed. Last little nitpick, if I was buying this as a dedicated filter coffee grinder and it was this big, this is too small actually, because uh, I don't need it for espresso. I, I would like a dedicated filter catch cup from Niche, you know, to go with the burr set because I want to comfortably grind 60 grams of coffee to make a liter of filter coffee. I need to do that with a filter grinder sometimes. That's just not comfortable with this dosing cup. I think it's a shame. I don't wanna to have to stop grinding halfway through to then you know, dispense and then catch the next 20, 30 grams and then dispense that. I want an easy, lazy life because I'm a lazy man, but that's the truth. I, I just want this to be bigger, more suitable for grinding larger batches of coffee. So let's talk about this as just a filter coffee option only. If you just bought the filter burr set, you can do that. That's 660 pounds, it's about hundred dollars. Is it, let's say, twice the value of something like an Ode 2 from Fellow? Mm, difficult, like that's a smaller grinder. The styling might be a bit more universally appealing. The coffee from it is great as a platform, 64 mil burrs, there's lots more optionality out there. They're cheaper than 83 mil burrs to sort of buy more sets of. So that's a, that's a difficult sell. And you might wonder, okay, let's just say I go with the espresso burr set. How's the filter coffee from that, if I'm honest? I enjoyed it slightly less than the filter coffee from the Niche Zero, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, whether that's a seasoning issue or something, I'm not really sure. Uh, it actually, it's a tiny difference, but there's slightly more fines from this burr set at a filter setting than there were from the Niche Zero in the particle size analysis. It was such a tiny fraction, but I don't think the flat espresso burr set for this makes great filter coffee. I like the espresso, but but not the filter that much. However, again, important, that's across a few coffees, not like a long time of testing. There could have been variants in the individual brews. Uh, I don't wanna say it's a hard and fast, this is definitely worse. What I will say is I wouldn't want day to day that to be my filter coffee burst of choice, which brings me to the sort of final thoughts of this whole grinder. I like the quality of build. The workflow is really important and it's still really very good and easy to use. I do feel like the world has caught up to niche uh, and in some cases surpassed what they are doing. Uh, I feel like the decision, the innovation of this to be, to be able to switch the burr sets out, kind of a risky one to me. I think they've done a good job in executing that idea. This is as easy as I could imagine it to be to switch burr sets out, as painless, uh, removing opportunities for user error, a, a clever solution. But I'm not sure for me, that's the right solution to my problem. I know that there are burr sets out there in the world that can offer me really lovely filter coffee and good sweet espresso with nice texture, but maybe not all the texture of conical burrs. That's kind of what I wanted from the original niche, more of that sort of universality. That's what I hoped they were gonna deliver with this. And so I do worry that part of this is my own expectations projected onto this and my own disappointment kind of wrapped up into it. However, at the price that they're sort of competing at, it's very competitive out there. I kind of hope that Niche offer more burr sets in the future. My two requests would be one, a more universal flat burr, something between the two that you offer, and then an appropriate catch cup for larger quantities of filter coffee. Then I would have a grinder that I think would be very flexible, really well built, you know, robust, feels like it's gonna last a very long time, which you want it to for the money you're spending. The motor feels robust, the parts feel well made. You know, that stuff's taken care of. I can't say that's always true in cheaper grinders. I like this, but I want more from it. And I hope more comes in the future. I'll certainly be paying close attention to this. I I've enjoyed using it, even though I might've expected something else. Before I do that final wrap, 
Two quick things. You might have noticed this in the background. It's our Coffee City print. We work with artist Kathleen Fu on this and we love it. It's so much great detail here, a city made of wonderful coffee things. It's limited availability. It's linked down in the comments below. And we also have some few remaining espresso cup sets left. These beautiful cups, we worked with artist Kamar Sanli and we wanted to create two cups to reflect kind of two styles of espresso. One lighter, brighter, more kind of floral, the other heavier, fuller, richer kind of texture. We figured colors and shapes can inform sensory experiences. We wanted to make something complimentary. There's one run and then they are gone forever. So there's limited stock left. There's a link down in the description below. Uh, we love them and I hope you like them too. Okay, but now of course, I wanna hear from you down in the comments below. Niche have shipped lots of these things into customers around the world. And if you have one, I'd really love to hear from you down in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experiences, what you've liked, what you've disliked, what's really worked for you, and what you would want to potentially change about this should it evolve in the future. If you're curious about this, if there's something I should have looked at or, or you wanna see tested, leave a comment down below. If I can answer it, I certainly will. But for now, I will say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.